Today, I'll be talking about the fourth cinema. The fourth cinema with definite article acknowledges Barry Barclay's fourth cinema, but focuses on an African film philosophy whose deep history and recorded history are interwoven. Barry Barclay's fourth cinema takes its cue from the world hierarchical framework of the first, first world cinema, the second world cinema, the third world cinema, and then fourth cinema, which he calls indigenous cinema, that is indigenous with a capital I. For this reason, it is not surprising that Barclay finds inspiration in the classical Greek headstones, the metaphor for, for the history of fallen soldiers arranged in chronological orders for his concept of fourth cinema. But the fourth cinema that concerns this talk is that of a living tradition that resists conformity to the Western structures of hierarchy, as well as linear measurement of time, which informs the chronological view of history in Barclay's thesis. Fundamental to the ideas of the fourth cinema in this talk is the cyclic passage of time in which an African film philosophy or philosophical tradition keeps returning to us. Drawn upon showing cars, the fourth stage, the fourth cinema does not solely, uh, does not come as a later addition to the fourth, second, third cinema framework, but come as a cinematic assistance of an indigenous Yoruba, African epistemology, morality, spirituality, and tragedy, which has gone through several media of storytelling before the inventions of film technology. Unlike Barclay's fourth cinema, the very ideas of fourth cinema, of the fourth cinema, does not solely celebrate and honor the past, but also mediate between the past and the present, between deep history and recorded history. At the fact room of the celebration and mediation is the cinema of self-sacrifice, of trinodic essence, of self-reflection, and of critical traditions that questions and confronts unbecoming philosophical and all cultural attitudes of post-colonial agents who tailor morality to their own needs. But to grasp the, the, the fourth cinema, the concept of the fourth cinema, it is crucial to revisit and all interpret showing card the first stage as the point of departure. The fourth stage, three dramas, one tragedy. In the fourth stage, Shoyinka draws our attention to three plays. These are plays in the ritual context of Obatala, the Yoruba god of creation, of Ogun, the Yoruba god of iron and creativity, and of Shogo, the Yoruba god of lightning and thunder. For Shoyinka, two of the plays constitute tragic arts, but one gives birth to Yoruba tragedy. The Yoruba tragedy could be understood through the mysteries of Ogun. Drama one, the play of Obatala or Urishala. The play of Obatala is the first word. Obatala is the Yoruba Mura god and sculptor who molded human beings into different shapes. 
the moral uprightness of Urishanla in the Yoruba deep history give credence to the knowledge of Obatala as the elderly sage of Ifan, the god of purity and of creativity. For this reason, Obatala or Urishanla was deified as the god of morality. Shoyinka describes Obatala's drama as the drama of form because it is readily available to provide emotional prelude and resolution for the dramas of other deities, such as Ogun and Shongo. It is because Obatala's place of form comes before and after all other dramas of self-recreation and of self-reformation within the Yoruba universe. That informs Shoyinka's remark that it is not the idea in religious art that is transmitted into wood or interpreted in music or movement, but a quintessence of inner being, a symbolic interaction of many aspects of revelations within a universal context with their moral apprehension. The motif of Obatala is white. The metaphor for his purity and unblemished morality. For the Yoruba, pure morality is what Obatala embodies. And for Obatala, the purity of morality can only be maintained and sustained through passive strength that brings loneliness and sufferings to the deity. So Inka therefore explains that Obatala's drama finds resemblance in the European passion play. But he stresses that Obatala's drama is not the drama of acting man, but that of suffering spirit. Drama two, Yoruba tragic drama through the mystery of Ogun. This is the primary drama in showing cast the first stage. The drama of Ogun, the first actor, and the acting man. In myth literature and African and the African world, Shoyinka explains that with creations of the multiple Godhead began a transference of social functions, the divisions of labor and professions among the deities whose departments they were thereafter to become. Knowing that none of them is complete without others, the primordial deities therefore functioned in various ways to complement and complete their individual incompleteness. Meanwhile, there was an impenetrable jungle described by Shoyinka as primordial jungle, which created individual distance in the pristine Yoruba society. But it was Ogun, the first actor or acting man who penetrated the jungle for others to follow. It is with this act of clearing the way and breaking barriers that isolated the pristine Yoruba society emerged the transitional or creative essence of Ogun. Perhaps that explains the reason why Ogun is called the pathfinder. The warden Ogun for this feat, the deities offered Ogun the crown to be the king over them. Ogun declined and continued his journey until he arrived at Iri. At Iri, Ogun was well received, later returned its hospitality by defending the city against its enemy. In gratitude, Ogun was offered the crown of Iri. But when Ogun appeared to the elders of Ire in his war regalia covered with blood, the elders quickly dialogued with their legs. Of course, Ogun declined and retired into the mountains where he lived in solitude, hunting and farming. The elders of Ire persistently persuaded Oshu or Ogun, but he later agreed came out of his solitude and was crowned the king of Iri. Ijala, the choric music of Ogun teaches us that Ogun leads 
is warrior to many victorious battle in the interest of protecting them against their enemies. But during a battle, Ogun was testy. The only thing available at the moment was the palm wine, which had placed close to him by issue, the Yoruba trickster god. For Ogun, the drink was delicious. Before you can say Jack Robinson, Ogun was drunk and was killing everybody, including his warriors. The mistake of Ogun gives birth to what Shoyinka terms Yoruba tragedy. The tragedy could be described as communal tragedy because one, Ogun surrenders his individuation to bring creativity into Obatala's creation. Two, Ogun sacrifices himself for the development of Yoruba civilization. And he does that within the oneness of Obatala. Three, the common psyche of the people is strengthened through the artistic creativity and technology of Ogun. For this reason, Shoyinka premised his knowledge of the fourth stage, which it described as the vortex of archetypes and the home of the tragic spirit on the creative destructive essence of Ogun, which strengthens the communal psyche of the Ogunian Koric Union, as well as spectators or spect actors to use, this, uh, to use the term of uh, Auguste Bois. Reenacting the tragic experience of Ogun, the Koric Union and the expect actors immersed themselves in the metaphysical world through the tragic music, liturgical dialogue, and what Shoyinka described as dance of images. This dramatic experience in ritual context is what Shoyinka, the modern tragic dramatist, recreates through the medium of physical contemporary action reflecting emotions of the first active battle of the will through the habits of dissolution. Drama three, the drama of Shongo. Unlike Obatala and Ogun, whose dramas brings cosmic, uh, cosmic balance, unity, peace and harmony to the Yoruba world. The drama of Shongo, the Yoruba god of lightning and thunder, distorts the harmonious universe of Obatala and Ogun. Perhaps that explains why Shoyinka claimed that the tragic actor for the future age, already the present for Europe, is that new technique ancestor Songo, the god of electricity, whose tragedy stems similarly from the principle of a preliminary self destruction. But as argued here, the age of Shongo, the tragic actor for the future age in showing Khan's sense, is already in the African world. The reason for saying that is because Shongo is the archetype of election in showing Khan's death and the kings of Osman, and B. Bandele's election. And today we have a lot of election, not only in Nigeria, but also in the continent. Of course, unlike Ogun's drama in which Ogun surrenders his individuation in the interest of commonality, Shongo's drama is the drama of domination, of individuation, of ego inflation, of conquest, of colonization, and so forth. Shongo's petty tyranny, self-destruction, retributive justice, bloodletting attitude and so on, which brings forth his, tra his tragedy, is the reason why Shoyinka insists that we will not find the root of Yoruba tragedy in the mysteries of Shongo. Shoyinka therefore finds a secondary drama of passion as the very call of Shongo's tragedy. It is because Shongo's history revolved around petty tyranny. His self-destruction was the violent, central explosion from ego inflation.
The fourth cinema, one camera, multiple perception. Who grabs the concept of the fourth cinema? Let us begin by exploring how the dramas of gods play out in the metaphysics of color and or light. The first cinema through the metaphysics of color and light. The color of Obatala is white. The color of Ugun is black. The color of Songu is red. But let us start with the color of Obatala and Ugun. In the dramas of Obatala and Ugun, white and black are complementary colors. These colors for the Yoruba symbolize the complementarity of creation and creativity of form and reform, of birth and rebirth, of passive strength and active strength, of inner essence and transitional essence, of conformity and rebellion, of certainty and uncertainty, and so forth. For the Yoruba, white and black do not symbolize oppositions, such as good and evil, light and darkness, truth and ignorance, as in the Roman, medieval, and modern cultures of Europe. Black, the color of Ogun, is not the same as dark. But through the mysteries of Ogun, the Yoruba consciousness of black is metaphysically connected to that of dark, the unknown word of Obatala. This is based on a common experience of how black color can mix in with white color and transformed to dark shades or off white or dark white. But no matter how Ogun blacks mixed in with white, the black can never become the pure white of Obatala. It is because the pure white of Obatala has indestructible and incomprehensible meanings in the Yoruba mind. For this reason, Ogun, like every acting man, can only transition to dark white or off-white or other dark shades, but never to pure white, the plastic beauty and unblemished morality of Obatala. It is by reflecting on the play of light and colors between Obatala and Ogun that one could clearly see that no philosophy, especially moral philosophy, of acting man can be considered pure philosophy. Of course, this is not the case in the philosophical teaching of Immanuel Kant and some modern, modern philosophers. But if the plays of white and black can only introduce light and dark to a multitude of color, colors, then no color for the Yoruba can become as pure as Obatala's white. They can only become a lighter or a darker fashion of themselves. It follows that in the world of Ogun, like that of every acting man, there's no metaphysical division between the light and the dark. But the contrary is expressed in Christian theology. It is striking to know that the play of white and black of Obatala and Ogun is the metaphysical source of what could be called the fourth cinema's camera. The camera is configured to reproduce white light as in the motif of Obatala. And if not covers with a lens, the camera remains passive and reproduces white light in the pure universe. Hence, one could think of Obatala as the fourth cinema's camera of creation, and Ogun as the lens of creativity. In so far, the motif of Obatala for the Yoruba symbolizes the pureness of morality, which is only possible through the passive strength of Obatala, then it is not absurd to say that the camera is originally designed to reproduce pure white, the metaphor for pure philosophy of Obatala. The lens therefore becomes the active device that brings action, 
transformation and creativity to the pureness and passiveness of the fourth cinema's camera. Just like Ogun, the lens sacrifices its individuation and brings active activity and creativity to the pristine existence of the camera. If one can relate to how Ogun transformed the pristine Yoruba society, then one can grasp how the lens allows the fourth cinema's camera to bring actions and creativity into the pure universe of the camera. This process is possible and discernible through the metaphysics of light and color in which Ogun surrenders his individuation and shows us the transitional will that brings creativity and activity to the pristine Yoruba society. In the Yoruba metaphysics, the sacrifice of Ogun could be understood as that of black color, which transitioned to dark shades to help the helpless of Batala and to transform the Yoruba world. It could be apprehended as the self-sacrifice in the dark world, which brings out different shades of color through the matrix of death and becoming. In artistic creativity, the transitions of Ogun from black to dark shades informs the transition of a shadow from black to dark and vice versa. Meanwhile, Ojiji, shadow for the Yoruba, is the metaphor for human conscience. It is because Ojiji is interiorized as a close friend who always checks and guides our moral attitudes and behaviors. The interiorizations of Ujiji is based on the Yoruba consciousness of the pristine existence and experience of Ogun, a protagonist actor and the mythological archetype or model for self-recreation. Because if there was a value system upon which individual shadows guide and check their moral behaviors, then the consciousness of Ogun, the first acting man, and the first OGG will have set the standard for the Yoruba matrix of death and becoming. Perhaps that will explain why Shoyinka claimed that Ogun not only dared to look into the transitional essence, but triumphantly breached it with knowledge, with art, with vision, with mystic creativity of science, a total and profound hybristic assertiveness that is beyond any parallel in Yoruba experience. For this reason, Ojiji, the Yoruba metaphor for human conscience, connects and disconnects the drama of Shango and that of his elder brother, Ogun, in the play of light and color. Red is the color of Shango. The color resists conformity to the oneness of Obatala. But white, it requires the play of white and black to transform its dominant nature Red always transitions to the lighter or darker fashion of itself, whereas red objects can only produce dark shadows because it is unnatural for red objects to produce red shadows. This shows that the will of Ogun's black to transition into dark is the point of connection between OGG, the dark shadows, and the red color or red object. Perhaps because the dark shadows of Ogun, the first acting man, have been interiorized as the standard for the Yoruba matrix of death, death and becoming, which continue to strengthen the communal psyche of the people. The connection is possible because black color is a mixture of red, yellow, and blue. The primary colors in pigment or dye but given its dominant nature, red always resists conformity to the transitional will of black. This is the same way the ego inflicting an onyidi shongo, who is election in showing Kadet and the King Osman and Bi Bandele's election, but always resists conformity to the transitional essence of Ogun, the mythological archetype and the model for self-recreation within the oneness of Obatala. 
This is the point of disconnection between Ujiji and the dark shadows of Ogun and the red color of Shungo. Hence, the dramas of red informs the conceptions of the dramas of Shungo as the dramas of individuation informed by a saturable quest for conquest, for oppression, and for domination. The drama of Shungo is the drama of ego inflation, of petty tyranny, of self-destruction, of bloodletting, of cruelty, of conquest, of domination, of colonization, and so forth. The drama could be called the drama in the rage and in the age of Shungo, the rage and the age of Shungo is the modern rage, wherein cannons, bombs, and all sorts of missiles are discovered and invented. But for the Yoruba, the rage and age of Shungo begins a long time ago with the Yoruba history of Shungo, who emit fires, who emits fire and rains missiles of thunderstorms on his subjects and alleged enemies. It follows that the dominations of Shungo individuation as against the submissions of Ogun individuation is the primary reason why Shoyinka insists that we cannot find Yoruba tragedy in the mystery of Shungo. So Shoyinka finds Yoruba tragedy in the mysteries of Ogun. However, the heart, the science, the religion, and the philosophy in the play of light and color permit the fourth cinema's camera to attain the philosophical citadel, through which the mysteries of Ogun and Shogo are brought from their ritual context into the fourth cinematic context. It is striking to know that the camera is to the fourth cinema, what the highs is to the spectator of the fourth cinema. It is because the camera lens control light and color the same way spectators' eyes controls their perceptions of light and color in the fourth cinema. Biologists teach us that at the back of an audience's eyes is what they call retina, where rods and cones, the two photoreceptors are located. As photoreceptors, cones receive colors, while rods receive light, perhaps, they do that the same way the four cinema cameras receive light and control color with the aid of lens. But for the cinema, for the camera and spectators, the idea of photo reception is the basis for the physical and biological experiences that teach us that white light illuminates, reflects, and absorbs other colors. That explains why the result is always white when we mix red, green, and blue, which are the primary colors in light together. So it is not surprising that the metaphysics of color and light is the basis for the invention of electronic components for photo reception and photo projection in screen media, such as camera, projector, TV, computer, phones, and so forth. But the metaphysics is embedded in deep history and recorded history, which are interwoven in the perceptions of images and sounds in Yoruba ritual drama and in the fourth cinema. Now, from live to recorded sounds in the first cinema, the perception of images and sounds in Yoruba ritual drama and in the fourth cinematic drama are distinct because the former is live drama while the latter is recorded drama. But the conscious, consciousness of the multiple perceptions, live or recorded, is based on Yoruba knowledge of light, of color, of sound, and of matrix of death and becoming. 
within a commoner universe of the unborn, the ancestor, and the living. Hence, so you can describe the tragic music of Ogun in the first cinema as highly charged, but also rendered to give expression to the consciousness of Ogun. So you can describe the tragic music as the music from the habits of transition. Meanwhile, tonality, the systematic arrangement of pitches into a pitch class is the reason why Shoyinka insists that European concept of music is a musical to the Yoruba art music, such as Ijala Ode and Yerefa in the first cinema. The integrations of poetry and myth in the tragic music is another reason why Shoyinka claims that the modern European conceptions of music is a musical within the context of Yoruba ritual drama of Ogun. Another music in the fourth cinema is the music of Shongo. But like the music of Ogun, the music of Shongo is recorded to invoke Shongo's spirit of violence, of oppression, of retributive justice against his alleged enemy. The music is neither for mourning nor for strengthening commoner psyche. The music is hypocritical as composed by Sankofans whose primary concern is the entertainment of Shongo. The music in Shoyinka's death and the King of Man and Bi Bandele's election over is either for pleasure or for massaging the self-inflicting ego of Shongo, the archetype of election in Shoyinka's drama and the B. E. Bandele's renewed cinematic interpretation. I would like to conclude by saying that the confrontations in showing Cast Death and the King's Osman and B. E. Bandele's election number is indeed largely metaphysical and not unconnected to the perennial problems of morality, of spirituality, and of tragedy. This is strongly supported by the dramas in a ritual context. It is validated by the play of light and sound in the fourth cinema. It is stressed by the tragic music of Ogun. Meanwhile, one could understand Obatala, Ogun, and Shongu as apparatus, light, and colors in the fourth cinema. But Ogun and Shongu are the main identified characters, a lesson and Olunde in the narrative universe of Shoyinka's play, as well as in the fourth cinemas of B. E. Bandele. Since there is no character like Obatala, one could understand Ogun as the only acting man and moral agent who sacrifices himself within the oneness of Obatala. But Ogun remains memorable through his color, tragic spirit, and tragic music. Why the death of Shongo? The archetype of election is metaphysical and individual. The death of Ogun is metaphysical and commoner. The metaphysics of sacrifice of Ogun is best understood through its transitional and creative essence, which is evident in the knowledge of Ogun as the Yoruba deity. In the metaphysical understanding of his black color, in the Ogun metaphor for the first OGG in the Yoruba universe. In the lens of the first cinema's camera, in Ogun, the archetype of Olunde, in Death and the King of Man and in Le Shoba. In Ogun, the being of the, the being in the dark world of Obatala and so forth. But the most important thing about the first cinema is that we, I mean the spectators, are metaphysically confronted by ourselves, either as, either as Songo, the archetype of election, or Ogun, the archetype of Olunde. Thank you.
would like to sit with it. Will the camera cover the table? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, would you like to sit with the you should sit down. Okay. That Thank you so much for that stimulating. Can you hear the? It's a lot of moving parts here. Um, I don't know if people online can hear us, but thank you so much for that stimulating talk um, on the, the fourth stage or the fourth cinema, uh, making use of Shrenka's idea of the fourth stage. Um, and I was wondering if, if anyone here on the webinar has any um, questions, you can put them in the Q&A or the chat. Um, I'm not seeing any yet, but perhaps um, you see some there. Um, but let, let me start out. Does anyone here in the audience have any questions for Dr. Bello? All right. Well, I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about um, the, the connection. So perhaps not everyone here has read the fourth stage. Um, but if you could say a little bit more, I don't know if anyone has read uh, Death in the King's Horseman or um, or seen Alishin Oba on, on Netflix, the, the recent kind of adaptation of Shanka's play. Um, but I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about how uh, the drama of Shango connects with um, Alishin Oba uh, rather than Obi. Okay. If you look at the play very well, and the film, you will see what uh, Shoyin Kap describes as uh, uh, Obatala. Uh, the fact that Obatala is ready to provide uh, emotional prelude and resolutions to the, to the play. And if you look at the film, you will see that the film actually starts with celebration. And if you see, uh, if you look at it, you will see uh, election in the midst of women, drinking, eating, and so forth. Of course, election is expected to be somebody like a role model in the society, somebody who should be willing to sacrifice for the development of the city. But in the field, you see a lesson who is drinking and all that. In the, in the following scene, you see a lesson on the, on the, on the horse. You see a lesson dancing different kind of music. And if you listen to this music, the lyrics is merely to praise a lesson for nothing. So he was dancing here and there. But that day, LSE was supposed to be the one taking care of the business that connects the, the, the world of uh, the living, the unborn, and the dead together. And that is where the ideas of human sacrifice come. And if you look at it very well, you will see that Olunde, the reason why I describe Olunde as Ogun is the fact that if you look at it critically, you will see that Olunde was not available. You only see Olunde in the evening. And the reason is that Olunde was outside studying in Europe, the same way Ogun was living under the mountain in the Christian Yoruba society. For Elisha the position is a very powerful uh, 
Perhaps let me let me let me let me let me let me talk about the history behind the election of Obama. The name election Obama is actually derived from Olokunshin in the old Oyo Empire. Olokunshin is like the owner Olokun Olokun the owner of rope Eshin Ors. The rope they use in time, the ox. Unless he is the owner of that rope. And the conception of the role is actually based on the fact that to Yoruba, the king is like the Eshin. Because if you consider Eshin as the means of transportation, the traditional means of transportation, you know, Eshin carry heavy loads. And because of that, it is believed that the king is like Eshin, carries every responsibility, the responsibility of the city state. But of course, it is difficult for the king to actually look after himself. You know, the king is like, let me use this cup as an example. In the traditional uh, Yoruba society, there's what we call Atupa. The king is like Atupa. Is Atupa is local lab. So they use the local lab. And there's a saying about Atupa that the lamp does not see his own basement. You know, the lamp that gives illuminations to all the surroundings, but his basement, there is darkness there. So unless he is there, like somebody who watched or looks after. Uh, or maybe let me check the moves of the king in order to correct him. Because in the old Oye empire, the Oyo Messi are more powerful. I mean, the people of Oyo, they are more they were more powerful than the king. So the king needs somebody to check him. And to Yoruba, Yoruba see election, and the king has won. So, and when a king dies, the role of election, that particular election, is automatically ends. And that explains the reason why election is expected to go through the rite of passage so as to hand over the role to another person. But in the play and in the film, we see a lesson. Who doesn't want to leave the position? He wants to continue and join all the good life and all that. When he was expecting, when people are expecting him to, to at least to engage in the business of the day. So, and if you look at it critically, history informs us that. Shango marries his, light, his, his last wife in the marketplace. The last wife is Oya. If you look at Soyinka Det and the King Osman and Elesh Yoba, Elesh marries that virgin in the marketplace. And we're talking about color, red. You will see, if you look at the film, you will see that red is prominent in the costume of election. So these are the things. And if you look at it very well, these are leaders. Olunde election. They are actually expected to, 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 to sacrifice themselves to promote uh, the, 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 the commonality and to serve the people. And if you look at Olunde like Ogun, Olunde was somewhere searching for knowledge. Because Ogun, Ogun Yoruba believes that Ogun is the god of Hion, is the hunter, is the warrior. Is, he did so many things. He invented Hion, he was blacksmith. And, so he did so many things. But we have a lesson who 
who has no time for that kind of moment for thinking and all that? Instead, he was marrying wives, doing all sorts of dancing in the marketplace and all that. So that's the problem of election. And that is why we see the beam of Songo in election and that of Obon in Onunde. And if you look at the film very well, you will see that Onunde appears. We only see Onunde in the night. That explains that Onunde was actually living in a, in a dark world, unknown world, on certain world like Ogun. But Enesi, he has no shame. He was dancing in the afternoon, marrying wives, seeing beautiful ladies and all that, dancing with women and all that. So that's the problem. Well, it seems like the problem of, of Enesi is that even before he refuses to, to die in that moment, it's if he was supposed to be the one leading the the, the and serving the king, it yeah. seems like his whole demeanor has has missed that part of the, the job. Yeah, that is that 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 is the problem because of course LSE was not expected, he is not expected to die in the field. Because history informs us that the only election of in the or your in the old of your empire who died actually died willingly because he thinks that oh he and the king that particular king they were close friends and when the king died and he feels that instead of him to retire to one corner he, he decided to die as well to show his uh, loyalty to the to the friend and all that and that, that explains why Shoei Tai insists that the dead in that play is largely met metaphysical. Because these people are not expected to die. Nobody is telling them to die, but they see them as women, uh, woman by cool, very cool, so somebody that carries others' responsibilities. You know, when you are in a leadership position, do you ever believe that you carry the responsibility of all the, all the people, the city state? And that is why people are not happy with the fact that, of course, there was agreement, unwritten agreement. But when it is time for election to go through the rite of passage, and hand over to maybe the next person, the younger, he decided to continue enjoying and all that. And that, that explains why Shoyika insists that the, the district uh, colonial officer has nothing to do with the, the intervention has nothing to do with the death. Because this death that we are talking about is inevitable. It's like somebody who is in the public uh, uh, hides that everybody celebrates worship and all that. And they now tell you to hand over so that another person can take over. But you, you want to continue to enjoy the, the, that privilege, that position. So that actually brings about the problem. And if you look at the history of Shongo, Shongo was the fourth king of Oyo, the old Oyo empire. Of course, Oyo was having problem with the Ogu at some point. And they invited Shongo to be the king. And because of that, his elder brother, Ajaka, had to step down. Ajaka was the top king, had to step down for him. And in the process, Oyo, uh, Shongo won battle for the, for, the, for the Oyo people and all that. And of course, people, they praise him, they give him all the, the honor and everything. But after that, Songo decided, he started suspecting one of his general as enemy. And in the process, he started using the same charm that he used in winning battle for them 
against his own people. So, and that is where the connection, where, the, where we see the connection. And like I said, the color of election as Shongo, they are similar. If you look at the film, you will see that it's not, it's not, it's not by mistake. B. Bandele actually used that color because, of course, the color is dominant in nature. And that color is prominent in the costume of election Oba. Great, thank you. Are there any any other questions? No, online. I'm not sure if I'm seeing everything on my screen. Just um, just okay, good. Now you're allowed to talk. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, oh, oh um, good afternoon. My name is Kendi Ukari. A wonderful pre presentation, um, Dr. Said. I really love your presentation. My question um, goes in the light um, of your presentation in terms of how can we reconcile your postulations about the fourth, uh, fourth seminar? Uh, cin uh, cinema in relation to certain current um Kegrig Soren Kegrigat Soren Kegrigat's um postulation about level levels of existence in terms of the um aesthetic level of existence the religious level of existence and the philosophical level of existence is there a correlation between and Kierkegaard's postulation and Schoenker's um, 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 conceptualization that you have with yourself. Thank you. Um, it, we may need to ask him to clarify a little bit. He was talking about levels of resistance. Sorry, uh, Kende, could you please clarify? <laughs> Okay, yes, I, I said there is a striking underlying similarity between um, um, Dr. Said's uh, postulations about Obatala, Ogun, and Shongo. Can this, or is there a relationship between these, these postulations in his presentation with Soren Kierkegaard's, um, le uh, Soren Kierkegaard's levels of existence? He postulated that there is a religious level of existence, aesthetical and ethical level of existence. Is there an underlying similarities? Of course, there is similarity. Yeah, because if you look at it critically, you will see that I was talking about the purities of Obatala's morality. And that purities of Obatala's morality in Yoruba world, actually has a meaning and the metaphor for that purity is actually based on the Yoruba knowledge or let me say the connections between ethic and aesthetics. And that connection informs the concept of Iwalewa. When the Yoruba say Iwalewa, they are actually saying that Iwa, that is moral or ethics, is beauty. Because for Yoruba, ethics and aesthetics, they are one. Ethics and aesthetics, they are one. Of course, in the European world, People do not know about that until when Fixer Stein actually talks about the oneness of ethics and aesthetics. And I think he did that in the early 20th century to say that ethics and ethics are one and the same. Two of them are metaphysical. And since we are talking about metaphysical confrontation here, 
Of course, we are talking about ethics and aesthetics, and there is connection between what Shoyinka is talking about and the fourth stage. And the, fourth, uh, the, the, the level of assistance that Shoyinka is actually talking about is the, 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 the first level is that of the living. The second one is that of the unborn. The third one is that of the ancestor. But the fourth one is what we are talking about here. And that fourth one is the same in the ritual context and in the cinematic context that we are talking about here. And that explains why I decided to start the fourth cinema by explaining the metaphysics of light and color so as to use light as a metaphor for morality. I mean, the pure morality of Obatala or Iwalewa of Obatala. Ivy, I think you typed and do. I also found out you raised your hand. Do you want to talk or should I read out? Would you like me to read it? <laughs> okay. Okay, do you want me to read it out loud? So, okay. uh, so thanks Aid, for a uh, stimulating presentation. I have a question. Could the hesitation of Elishin to proceed to the other uh, world be explained by him being more individualist minded as against being communal? Also, can you relate this to the sit tight syndrome common among leadership in Africa? Ivy, thank you very much for that question. Of course, you just answered the question yourself. <laughs> very, very simple. Yeah, we can relate it to sick tight uh, syndrome in, in Africa. And that explains why I said that today we have a lot of election in the post-colonial Africa. We have a lot of them. So they are not interested in the development of the continent, but they were there for their own personal gain. So, and that, and that explains the problem of Eleshi. The reason why Eleshi does not want to leave that position because he wants to continue the, the enjoyment, the merriment, the oppression and everything. Thank you. I think I would, I would add on to that. So we have the play, Death in the King's Horseman. Yeah. And now we have this film that just came out yeah. uh, last year. Last right? year, yeah. So, um, is there anything in the film, and you're linking it to fourth cinema, that that you can see um, commenting specifically on contemporary events? How 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 does this become relevant to the contemporary moment as a film that just came out? Yeah, you know, I, I just talked about Elishi. Elishi is a very uh, very powerful leader in that. Uh, uh, in the whole of your empire. Very powerful. Of course, his role is not only about enjoying life, dancing, everything. It's about working with the king so as to, to drive the society forward. And if somebody is there dancing, how will you have time to do what you are expected to do. And we have a lot of them in Nigeria today. If you ask me, they, they marry 30 wives, 20 children, and all that, and they do all sorts of things. And recently, a lot of them, they, 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 they hide money in the containers, they hide money in the, you see, that is the problem. They just want to keep enjoying, they don't want to do anything. And the problem is that, If you look at the contemporary uh, Nigeria today, in the Senate, you will see that people are there to enrich them themselves. I think they are collecting 37 or 38 million every month in Nigeria Senate. 
But this senator, they find it difficult to pay 18,000 naira minimum wage for people who are working. You see where the problem lies. But of course, Cho Yinka is actually talking to them. But they need that metaphysical knowledge to know that this is actually talking to them, for them to see themselves in that play and the theme. So, so what do we make of the tragedy of Olunde then, if we think of this as, as the, of the, course. the next generation has? <laughs> <pants. laughs> of course, the tragedy of Olunde is the tragedy of every young individuals in Nigeria today who are struggling, who are struggling, they are, in fact, they are struggling to, to make things happen in the country, in the country, in the continent. But these leaders, they will not give them opportunity. That's number one. Number two, the tragedy of Olumde is actually based on the fact that Olumde was trying to to protect his people. And in the process, he sacrificed himself. That was the same way Ogun was trying to protect his people. But he was stripped by issue. And when he realized that he has killed his people, he felt ashamed. And he left. The same shame, the same problem of Olunde that how can I do this? That's the same problem of Ogun. How can my father, you know, you know, Olunde feel ashamed when he sees his father getting married on the night he was supposed to be doing something very, very important. To the society, the sacrifice. That is where the problem lies. But today in Africa, we have a lot of Olunde too. They were there. They were just there. But nobody wants to listen to them. Their fathers, their political leaders don't want to give them opportunity. And of course, the same thing happened to Olunde. Of course, Olunde will have been the, the next election of in the film. Already he has the knowledge to move the society forward. But the father is still enjoying the, the privilege. He does not want to give him opportunity. And then, I mean, with, with the death of Olunde, is there a kind of break in the tradition? Did you have yeah. to go ahead? Um, so yeah. A separate issue. Though, yeah. Before I finish. Yeah. Ask. I was going to say, so I've read the play, but um, I've not seen the film. I'm definitely going to watch the film now. Um, but I think it's great. There is a film, like, especially in terms of, like, such an important play for, I mean, you were saying as well, like, um, maybe people don't, can't understand because they don't understand the metaphysical, so they can't see themselves. In the in the characters, I was just wondering, like now the films come out, have you seen that there's more kind of conversation about some of these things, maybe relating it to some of the post-colonial issues, or just whether whether there's been like more discussion and what the response has been to the film was my question, I guess. Yeah, yeah of course we are expecting more discussion. Yeah. I think. Of course, a lot of people are saying that the film is boring and all that. I saw one review that like that online. Oh, really? But of course, we're talking about tragedy here, and you said it's it's boring. Yeah, so it's not been the receptor's not been very good. Then. Of course, I saw one review like that. That yeah, yeah. the, the reviewer was saying that the film is boring and all that. But I saw two other ones that. Mm. But of course, the film is still very new, and I believe that people will start discussing the film anytime soon. Are there further questions? Uh, Judy, hold on. Can you unmute yourself, please?
Judy, do, uh, make sure you're unmuted. Um, okay. okay, well, while we're, we're waiting for Judy, I, so I'm, I'm interested in, in the, the reaction to the film. The film is very theatrical, right? It feels very much like a stage play. And I wonder yeah. if, if some of the audience for films is expecting, you know, is, is the film format itself part of the, the issue with the way it's being received by the audience? Would someone who went to a stage play be saying the same things that the That's film true. audience is saying? Well, <clears throat> I think the setting is uh, just to depict maybe the ancient world. Of course, in the play, everything happens in the market. So, and the reason for that is to, to actually stress the centrality of election to that particular society. You know, market is like the public space where different uh, opinions, where people uh, talk about different things. And that place for election is where he can only find enjoyment. Evil said it in the film that in the midst of women, he, he finds enjoyment in the midst of women. So, and perhaps because of that, the filmmaker, the film director, B. Bandeli decided to use the same market. Of course, I don't think there will be any other, any other, any other uh, location or setting, any other suitable setting for that particular film. Because even the setting is actually symbolic to the entire uh, to the entire theme. They do all buying and selling, they do dancing and all that. And all these are actually telling us a lot about uh, the society. So and I don't think that should because we, we've seen a lot of films that people they do in maybe in one room, and people people receive the film, but it is it is normal. Everybody will not see the film the same way. Perhaps the person did not understand what is really going on in the film. Perhaps that explains why the person decided to say that okay, the film is boring. They should have left the film as stagely and all that. I, I don't know, was Judy ever able to, to um, say something? Judy, can you hear us? <laughs> okay, um, so it, you know, if anyone else has other, other thoughts or questions or wants to enter into the conversation, you can um, use the Q&A or the webinar chat. Um, or you can also just unmute yourself and, and speak. To, to speak, do they need to raise their hand, I think? So if you want to speak, you can raise your hand and then you'll be enabled to speak. Um, just as we're waiting for, for any other questions, um, just thinking about the idea of fourth cinema. I think when you first said this, we were thinking, oh, okay, first cinema, second cinema, third cinema, and then and then fourth cinema. Um, but it, it sounds like you're you're saying it's it's closely related to the metaphysics of the fourth stage. And could you say a little bit more about what is the the power of cinema in expressing this idea of transition? Uh <clears throat> Okay, to say that fourth cinema, the fourth cinema is not the same thing as fourth cinema. Is to actually say that before the fourth cinema that we are talking about, before the invention of film technology, 
we already have the metaphysical knowledge of these four cinema. And that explains why I say that this is not about these uh, structures of hierarchy of fourth world cinema, second world cinema, third world. No, it has nothing to do with that. Because this fourth cinema that we're talking about has been in existence even before the inventions of the technology. And that explains the reason why I started with the metaphysics of color. Already in our mind, these colors have been there and they have indestructible meanings. And these meanings affect the way we understand this cinema. That's number one. Number two is the fact that this first cinema that we're talking about, we can think about it within the ritual context of Ogun, Obatala, and Shungo. Because in the ritual context, what gives us the knowledge of this cinema is the light, color, and sound that we are talking about. And of course, our background, cultural background, that is what I describe as the matrix of death and becoming. Because of course, the way we are born is different from how we develop ourselves. And the culture in which we are born influence the way we think. And that explains what I describe as deep history. In Yoruba deep history, we already have this cinema. And that deep history begins a long time ago. We can think of this deep history as embodied history. The history that we have in ourselves. But this history, we learn this history through, through orators and rituals. The history is psychological, is biological, is sociological, is metaphysical. But this history, we call it deep history, deep history because it is difficult to put into writing. But this history in, in, uh, influenced the creation or the invention of what I described as the fourth cinema. I don't know if I'm communicating. <laughs> <laughs> right do we have any other questions any other question okay so uh we're, we're getting close to the end if anyone wanted to say something please say say it now um because we need to be out of the room in the next i think 10 minutes um but i, I was just I've been, I've been thinking about lunde a little bit more um and okay. He, and he was supposed to be the next Elishim, right? He sacrifices himself at that moment to do his father's duty. Yeah. And so, what does that then do to the continuation of of of, of the necessary ritual? To be honest with you, the death of Olunde is just there because he is ashamed of his father's ah. Uh, how would I how would I describe it? His father's attitude. And he actually does that to save the face of the family. Let me put it that way. And of course, his father was not expected to die, or is not expected to die. The death they are talking about is transitional. Like when you hand over your positions to another person, leadership position. And of course, Yaloja knows that it is difficult for him or it will be difficult for him to do that. That is why they give him everything he wants. Because they need another person to continue. 
That is why Shoyinka explained that continuity for Yoruba is not linear. It is about cyclical passage of time. It is not linear, the measurement, European measurement of time. And if you hand over the position for somebody who is who have uh, maybe fresh ideas, innovative ideas, it is because they give Ogun opportunity to do so many things. That is why he was able to do. But in the case of Olinde, the father was not, he's not ready to, to hand over the positions to him. And Olinde has traveled wide to learn new things that can actually bring development to the society. But we have a father who, who keeps marrying wife enjoy life, he doesn't want to leave the position. And of course, somebody like Elishin dies the moment the king dies. Because the moment a king dies, Elishin also ends all these, because all the privileges, all the positions, they give it to another person. But this is what a lesson wants to continue enjoying. He doesn't want to leave that position for another person. And that explains what Ivy was actually talking about the other time, about seat tightening and syndrome in, in, the, in, the, in Nigeria, in post-colonial Nigeria. Here we have somebody who wants to be president for 30 years, who wants to be governor for 100 years, who wants to be And some of them, they will be there, they will bring their wife, they will bring their concubine, they will bring their children and all that to be part of this. And in the meantime, the Olundes are, are dying. <laughs> that is the tragedy. Mm. That is the tragedy. And showing can find similarity in his tragedy and that of Ogo. And if you go and watch the film, at the point when they were doing the tragic music of Ogun, the chant of Ogun, the camera zoomed onto Olunde. Leads to stress the fact that this is Ogun that we're talking about. Um, we are almost out of time, but we, you just said something about the the, the singing, um, and, and I think that's important. So the, the voice of the narrator and then uh, could you say something about how the music itself uh, lends itself to the interpretation of the film? Yeah. It's a song of Ogun. Yeah. Ogun, you know, when they're talking about Ogun, so you can't talk about tragic music. All this music, they sing to remember to immerse themselves in that, the abyss of transition. And I can, I can, I can try, I can try, I can try that. Can try, let me try. Oh, go on, you're a con me. A maquia, a monoco, any a word of Tim Bellona Torah. This is to say that in the olden days, Ogu was the king of Egypt. Ogu was the protector of Iro people. Ogu, a monoco, Ogu is the pathfinder. Is the one who invented healing iron, cutlass, all that we use then in farming, in, in, in hunting, and do all sorts of things that actually makes the society better, that brings peace and unity, that makes people feel good. Ogun was the blacksmith. So all these chants, all these, all these. Uh, tragic music is to mourn Ogun, to remember Ogun, to remember everything he has done for the society. But when you listen to the music of Shango, you will hear something like Akogun Jaye, Akogun Jaye, Jaye, like Elish is enjoying, keep enjoying. Your enemies should go and die, something like that. You know, there's these are two different ways of remembering people. 
Great. Well, thank you so much. There, there's a lot of provocative thought here and, and a lot to think on. I, especially, I thought the, the the color and the the light and the camera, it was all really interesting as far as theorizing for cinema. So I have to go back and, and read it as well. Um, but thank you so much for your talk. I hope all of those of you online and, and uh, enjoyed the talk and hopefully um, if you want to be in touch with him, his email is on the SOAD website. You can navigate that. So thank you so much for coming and um, we'll have another event. Is there another event next week? Next week, next Monday. All right, thank you so much. Should we thank you. Is it ending? <laughs>